Hey, welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I'd like to take you through an experience I had last week with repairing uh, some problems on this Smith Corona Silent Super using the new Smith Corona Floating Shift Typewriter Repair Bible that has been produced by the Right Reverend Ted Monk. Stay tuned. Well, you might remember I told you this story a while back, or maybe uh, I've certainly mentioned it on my blog, but this typewriter I got last year, which is 2016, and I acquired it from a local Craigslist ad. Uh, a gentleman who I bought it from, I, I guess I, I've described him as kind of a hippie fellow, and I apologize if that offends anybody, but anyways, his house was filthy, and the typewriter was really filthy. And it took me many months of cleaning it and re-lubricating and degreasing and all this to get most of the problems worked out. But one of the problems that kind of has remained in this typewriter was an, an intermittent problem with the escapement, uh, with it skipping uh, spaces after the letters. And intermittently, uh, when you're typing really fast and you do a space after a word and then you start the next word, the first letter of the next word would start a little early, so that space between the two words wasn't quite wide enough. So some weird little problems like that, and I knew they were escapement related, but uh, I guess I was kind of tired of working on it and just decided I'll just live with the problem the way it is. And then this shows up in the mail. I'm indebted to Mr. Ted Monk for putting together this great compendium of classic uh, service literature from Smith Corona involving their floating shift typewriters. This is an invaluable book for anybody that owns one of these typewriters and wants to know how to how to fix problems in it. So I went into this book and um, there is a whole section, page 184, the adjustment manual. And I started going through the table of contents and going through the adjustment sections and I discovered that they had all kinds of uh, details about the the escapement and how to work on it and how to check all the alignments and all that so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk you through step by step step all the stuff that I checked and what I found wrong what I did to correct it and the result well the first place I started in the adjustment manual was the space bar because I knew that spacing was also some of the issues so I wanted to check all the adjustments pertaining to that and the first thing the book has you check is the uh, alignment of the space bar to the frame of the typewriter, whether the space bar fits in there snugly. And my machine was fine in that regard. There was plenty of clearance and there were no issues with that. Um, and also whether the top of the space bar is flush with the, uh, with the case of the machine. Uh, and they tell you how to bend some parts if, the, if it's not. Then on the top of page 207, they had you check in the uh, space bar mechanism for if it's free to move, and mine was free to move. I had no problems. Uh, then they had you check down at the bottom of page 207, they had you check the tripping point of the space bar. That at, at what point in the travel of the space bar does it trip the escapement? So let me show you where that adjustment was at and what I found. This is looking at the bottom of the machine with the machine sitting on its back. Um, and so this is the escapement mechanism right here. And if I uh, try to move the space bar, you can see that it is attempting to move this little horizontal lever. And this uh, is part of the um, pivot arm that disengages the escapement. And what I found with my space bar is that the space bar had to be pushed all, almost all the way down until the space bar's rubber stoppers were almost being hit before the escapement would trip. And uh, let me unlock the carriage here to show you. And so the adjustment for that is to reform or reshape or bend this arm. In my case, I had to bend it up so it engages the escapement a little bit earlier. And now it works fine. I have, I have a more sensitive space bar and uh, I have better spacing. The next thing that the book had me check was the escapement throw out, which is this lever here that you pick up on the right side of the carriage and it's used to recenter the carriage in the middle for storage in its, in its case. It also disengages the escapement. This whole thing was fine. I didn't have any problems with that. So then I moved on to the next section, which was the escapement rack. 
And the next thing the book has is checking is the uh, freedom of motion of the escapement wheel here. And what you want to do is you want to center the carriage with the escapement throwout letter, lever that I just showed you earlier. And then you're going to pick up the rocker arm here, pull it up so that the rocker arm disengages from the wheel, and then you'll be able to spin the escapement wheel to see how free it moves. And if it's not free enough to move, you loosen this nut and adjust this screw here. It's kind of like a bearing, and I don't know if I can turn it sideways, but it's like a bearing that controls the shaft of the escapement wheel. You don't want it to be so loose that the escapement wheel moves back and forth, but you do want it to be um, in there so it's snug, but it's still free to spin freely. I found that it was a little snug, and I had to loosen the nut and, re, uh, and loosen up that set screw, so it was a little bit um, uh, more freer to move. Okay, the next step that they had you doing is checking the um, Type R Universal bracket, which is this area, and there's four of what they call fulcrum screws, two on this side and two on the other side, and they want to make sure that there's a little bit of sideways play, like barely, which there is, but not too loose. If, it's, if there's no play there at all, then it'll bind and it'll make the uh, the action hard to move. So that was okay. Okay, one of the most critical tests to the escapement is this rocker arm right here, which I showed you earlier. If you center the carriage with the uh, escapement disconnect and then disconnect this spring right here, just disconnect one end of it, so there's no spring tension here. Then when you set the machine on its back, so this side is up, this rocker arm here, this whole rocker arm should freely fall. It should move freely up and down. And that's what I found to be the problem, is the two uh, screw set screw nuts right here and right here, uh, they were too tight. And actually, it's easier to adjust this when there's more room here to get your wrench in. But basically, this thing did not pivot under its own weight when it was freed up. It was just too too hard and bound up, so I ended up uh, just loosening this nut and loosening the set screw a little bit so that this arm is now, rock arm is free to rock under its own weight. I think that was the main thing that fixed this escapement problem. All of the other escapement checks that I made were good at this point, and so I went on to the next one, which was the escapement tripping point. And the way they have you doing it is you want to move one of your type bars, and you move it up toward the type guide. And the type guide, of course, is this right here where the type bars hit. And there's these two little fingers sticking out from the type guide. What you want to do is when you move the type bar up by hand, the escapement should trip right when this type slug gets right adjacent to the finger. Okay, right there. And what mine was doing was it was it was only tripping after the type slug was halfway into the type guide close to the ribbon. So it was tripping too late. And the adjustment for that is underneath the escapement. And it involves reforming this little arm right here in order to adjust that tripping point. So after doing this service and after finding that the main problem was the there was three issues, right? The space bar tripping point, the escapement uh, tripping point, and of course the pivot arm was tight. After doing those uh, adjustments, and keep in mind that this machine had already been lubricated and degreased multiple times in the past, but after this, I uh, put a piece of paper in the machine and began to extensively test it with all kinds of typing, random typing, just page after page. And the escapement problems, I'm happy to report, seem to be fixed. I haven't had any problems, and I'm, that really excited me. And it really proved the value of this typewriter Bible. Um, the other thing I was interested in in this book was just a little bit of historical information about these Smith Coronas. But, uh, there were adjustment procedures here for 
adjusting the, the action on these machines above and beyond the factory standard for particular styles of typists who might have had a particularly bad habit of hanging their fingers on the machine or maybe use too light of a touch. There was ways of adjusting some of the parts, actually re-machining some of the parts in the escapement to help compensate for the, for the way people type. And I thought that was really interesting that they went to that extent to uh, uh, help their customers. They also have what they call a speedy galloping typist who, a typist who crowds the escapement, and they gave some suggestions on how to how to fix those kind of problems. So, I found this uh, book to be not only um, helpful, extremely helpful for my issue on this machine, but just historically and just for general knowledge of typewriters, it was really really invaluable. And one of the things also that I really love about this manual is that whenever some terminology is mentioned in the adjustment procedure, they underline the part in question and then they draw a call-out arrow pointing directly to that part in this diagram. And so you, it tells you right where everything is at. And I thought that was really cool. That's, that's just a really special way of making a service manual really usable for the technician. So emboldened by my positive repair experience on what had been a really troublesome typewriter, but a typewriter that otherwise I really loved and really liked the touch of and everything, emboldened by that, I wanted to tackle one of the last issues with this machine, which was the uh, vertical alignment of the letters. The individual letters were not all aligned the same. And I knew from reading this book and also a companion uh, book that Ted Monk has published in the Typewriter Bible series, I know that there were special tools that the technicians used to realign the vertical alignment, which involved the type bars, it would involve bending the type bars to change the vertical alignment. Um, and there was a special tool that you used to do that with, which I didn't have. So I had to resort to using some, some hand tools, uh, several pliers, and it took me quite a while. I first, of course, it was pretty easy to identify which individual letters uh, were the culprits, but I had to figure out how to bend these type bars while keeping the type slugs from being crooked and also I had to keep them uh, such a way that they would go into the type guide properly and make a proper imprint. And I found the tricky part of this was you could get it so the lowercase letters looked good, but if you tried typing uppercase letters, that's when you would have the letters would be smeared a little bit because the type bar goes into the type guide right when it's near it's hitting the ribbon and it would hit on one side of the type guide and, and slide sideways as it's it's contacting the ribbon and that sideways sliding of the type bar causes the imprint to smear a little bit and making a messy imprint so it involved quite a bit a, a lengthy extensive period of time of carefully aligning these type bars so that I could uh, basically what you're doing is bending the type bar to shorten it so that it lowers the the vertical height down closer while not bending it sideways or any other way. So anyway, I did that and I'm happy with the alignment. This machine is the best that it's been since I've owned it and I'm sure it's the best it's been for many years. Now I have another of these Smith Corona Silence, the non-super version. Slightly different colors. It's sort of a brownish gray and I have some tan on the space bar and the light green uh, space keys. Uh, and it's, it's a, uh, a Pica instead of Elite. This is Elite font. Uh, anyway, that machine, I went through the same alignment checks. Now, I wasn't having any escapement issues with that other machine, but I just wanted to go ahead and check it anyways. And what I found uh, was that the tripping point of the escapement, remember when the, the type bar comes up toward the type guide, my other machine, it was tripping too early. It was about uh, maybe uh, almost a full centimeter too early. And so I had to adjust that little arm down there in the escapement to uh, get it so it tripped at the right point. So that could have been causing potentially a problem I wasn't even aware of. But uh, So this has been a, a little synopsis of how the, uh, the Smith Corona Floating Shift um, Typewriter Repair Bible has been invaluable to me to getting my Smith Corona Silent Super into better working order. And now I can really say it's a great machine and I have no embarrassment over having anybody try to use it. It, it just is a great machine now and it's really fine tuned. And so 
Um, I'm invaluably indebted to uh, Ted Monk for the book, and I would encourage you guys to consider getting one of these books for your machine if you're interested in keeping it in top order. Well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and keep those typewriters typing. You have yourselves a great day.